so hi guys uh, i am back with a new video uh, after uh, i think um, two week one week or 10 days so moving ahead with our topic of myeloproliferative neoplasms uh, today what we are going to be discussing uh, is uh, we had uh, i had mislabeled my last video as cnl and et it was actually cnl and pv that is chronic neutrophilic leukemias and polycythemia vera these two topics i have covered in the last video uh, in this video again in very short we'll cover what is essential thrombocythemia a bit about myelofibrosis and chronic eosinophilic leukemias all this is a spectrum of npn with some dysposis uh, some category showing mild dysposis some category showing no dysposis after that we'll progress to npn mds and then as the topics progress I have stopped the histopath videos for a while because in hematopath, if I'm completing MPN, then I would prefer that I complete every topic under MPN and then move to a histopath, histopath video, because all of these are interconnected and interrelated under one umbrella. So if I take CML and then I don't take PMF, ET, PV for a while, you are going to forget what CML shows and how to differentiate between uh, CML with other. like maybe an et with or a um, overt phase of polycythemia or uh, early cellular phase of pmf that is why i'm trying to complete hemat so this to me is just one lecture broken up into multiple uh, fragments uh, just to cover this one entire diagnosis of myeloproliferative neoplasms after that again i'll go back to histopath complete that one topic of histopath and then again repost hematopath so that you know the continuity of the lecture does not break and you do not have problems in finding the video if you want to view it again and again again i'll not teach you the entire topic what i'll teach you are the important points that are there in the exam important points that you should know to diagnose a slide and uh, it has tables this presentation from my book so if you are interested in hematopath and you want to have a book which has a concise description of entire who please go ahead read my book uh, it is available on uh, the ahuja brothers website as manual of hematology if you type in on google my name and manual of hematology you are going to get the link to the book so i hope uh, that uh, you uh, like uh, and please comment on uh, give your reviews on the book how i can improve same goes for the lectures Uh, and you can always interact with me on messenger as i have said before so moving on so uh, everything all these um, um, what shall i say tables are there in the book what i had done is read the entire who then i have read about uh, the recent advances and compiled them as tables so the features why i have um, 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 given this as, as et and post et myelofibrosis because et every mpn is has a cellular phase and then a phase where the marrow becomes completely spent the marrow becomes completely um, you know fibrosed and if you get a marrow at that phase you might confuse it uh, with the primary myelofibrosis so i will discuss the fibrotic phase of each lesion so and tell you how to not confuse it with a pmf okay so uh, a et in an early phase has that clinically the patient is asymptomatic or might present with ischemic or thrombotic episodes even sometimes bleeds there might be leukocytosis leukoerythroblastic picture mostly what you get in a et is lot of uh, platelets in a peripheral smear extremely high platelet count which cannot be attributed to any reactive cause maybe sepsis or iron deficiency anemia as a reactive thrombocytosis when you are not able to find any such cause but the platelet is repeatedly increased in cbc to a large to a huge extent a lot of thrombosis is there uh, sorry uh, um, uh, uh, thrombocytosis is there then you can think of uh, uh, et the thrombocytes that you see can be bizarre giant a granular platelets and isocytosis pdw platelet distribution width a marker of the variation in size of the platelets seen in the five part and seven part counter cbc that is increased okay while if the patient comes to you in a phase where the et remain undiagnosed untreated and the patient has now progressed to a fibrotic phase 
you might get clinically splenomegaly in 20% cases, hepatomegaly and grade 2 or 3 fibrosis. Till here, you will not be able to differentiate between a, if the patient comes to you with myelofibrosis in PMF and ET as the table shows. The bone marrow microscopy and then further molecular workup will help you in doing so. Okay, I'll show you that. Fine. Uh, then of course there may be uh, this 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 thing is continuation of the ET cellular ET finding in the uh, peripheral and the marrow. The bone marrow in a good cellular ET can be slightly hypercellular to cellular. Many giant megakaryocytes abund with abundant cytoplasm and stag antler-like nuclear lobes. What it means to say is if I if I make it over here that supposing this is a giant megakaryocyte then multiple lobes like this like the you know a stag the antlers of a stag are like this like branching tree similarly you will get lobes this these lobes will be inside a membrane and this will be a giant megakaryocyte sometime balloon like appearance of the uh, nucleus of the megakaryocyte might also be there but there will be no dysplasia and no micro megakaryocyte mild erythroid or myeloid hypoplasia or it might be normal also and no other significant finding so in marrow what you will get is only significant finding in the platelets L large number of increased platelets loose clusters not um, tight loose clusters of platelet loose ka matlab hota hai between two platelets i'll just change color you will get other marrow cells also so there's one platelet over here megakaryocyte one megakaryocyte over here and then other erythroid and myelo myeloid lineage cells but these megs will be lying close together in loose clusters okay in primary myelofibrosis you might in early phases you might get all the cell lineages pan myelosis just like polycythemia vera there might be fibrosis and clusters of platelet in uh, PMF2, but those clusters will be tight. There will be no uh, intra megakaryocytic other marrow elements in between two megakaryocytes. Also, this, the nucleus of the megakaryocyte will not be ballooned or stag antler like, it will be hyperchromatic, stretched out, as if someone has taken a mega and stretched it out. And dense bluish hyperchromatic nucleus you will get. Those tight clusters with hyperchromatic nuclei of MEGs are features of PMF. Okay, so in the case of fibrosis, you are not getting those hyperchromatic MEGs, you are not getting a lot of dysposis, or you are getting giant MEGs maybe with loose uh, cluster clustering and those balloon-like uh, uh, nuclei. Don't think of PMF. Think that it might be a fibrotic phase of ET. Okay. WHO gives criteria for diagnosis to make things easier. Platelet more than 4.5 into 10 to power 9 in the CBC. Bone marrow proliferating MEGs. Uh, all these are mature megakaryocytes with no significant dysposis. And uh, other criteria for other neoplasms like BCR, ABL positivity is not there. Then you can go for JAK2, KLR, MPL mutation to confirm it is a MPN. Okay. Minor presence of clonal markers and absence of evidence of reactive thrombocytosis. Reactive thrombocytosis is secondary thrombocytosis like in sepsis in kids or in uh, iron deficiency anemias or some excessive blood loss, bleeding may, you might get reactive thrombocytosis. So, wo cheez nahi hai, wo reactive causes ruled out and then only can you call it clonal. Major criteria is documentation of previous ET. If, if it is a fibrotic phase, then you have to, even if you are getting, supposing a marrow which has come in fibrosis, and you are not getting classical PMF features and you want to say that these are the MEGs that are showing this is hyperchromatic, there are no tight clusters, there are no dysposis, it can be ET so previous demonstration should be there no record should be there otherwise your diagnosis will be query ET, query PMF it will always be a query and then you can go for clonal markers however going for clonal markers might not help much because CALAR, MPL, JAK2 will be positive Fine. then you can just you know give a query query diagnosis and the clinician will correlate and then treat the patient all right then there are additional to to there are everywhere there's a major and a minor criteria uh, molecular may there the major is documentation of previous ct in sorry not molecular in pmf ET. 
there are additional criteria required that may be to call it fibrotic et anemia with an 2 gram per dl decrease in hb ho raha ho ya to ya to anemia ho frank leukoerythroblastic picture will always occur when there is metastasis or fibrosis elevated ldh spleen more than 5 cm and b b symptoms like more than 10% weight loss in 6 months and night sweat prognosis asymptomatic cytoreductive therapy hoti hai et mein good prognosis poor when it progresses to pmf every npn can move and progress into a leukemia always remember or into an mds so it might progress into an acute leukemia or mds now this table in more detail is given in my book okay so now coming to the next topic that is chronic eosinophilic leukemia count more than 1.5 we just had a case in uh, in our setup where the pediatrician sent us a marrow the child had a count of 80000 or something and the uh, eosinophilia was 80% Uh, it was a baby. It was a sorry, not a baby. It was a 10, 12 year old male child, and they were suspecting something like this, some syndromic. What we did was in the marrow, a lot of myeloid proliferation was there, erythroid was there with micronormoblastic to megaloblastic features. So we advised them to follow up the case with DEC. Give the child DEC, wait for 20, 25 days, and see the response. If the eosinophilia does not decrease, then go for molecular investigations because they are expensive. However, in children, mostly the active eosinophilia, not clonal. Chronic eosinophilic leukemia is prone clonal. Uh, hereditary eosinophilic uh, uh, syndrome uh, is a dustbin diagnosis. When you are not able to put the child in anything, then you go for H. Yes. There are other causes which can cause eosinophilia: parasitic infestations, allergic manifestations, lung infections. So rule out those before tell, calling a case clonal eosinophilia. This is the message that I want to give, actually. This is the message you should also give to the clinician. So, if you go for CEL, the uh, the criteria is that is why I have discussed this in detail. More than 1.5 into 10 to the 9 per liter. That is in the CBC. WHO criteria for MPNs and MPN MDS like BCR mutation, atypical CML, ETPV, MF. Nothing is met. Blast less than 20 percent in PS and BM. In chronic eosinophilic leukemia, there will be no BDGFR, AB, FGFR mutation. okay this this is important remember this because there is a separate group of leukemias with these mutations which present with eosinophilia hmm. and those can be seen in younger children also clonal markers like t2 axl1 dnmt3a can be seen in old age acha this is very very important hum normally mds ke liye mp and mds ke liye aajkal tech2 axl1 dnmt3a ko bada importance dete hain What is important to know is that these markers can be there in old age cases. So, an old age patient with eosinophilia and no other mutation, but these mutation positive, you really have to investigate before you label the name of the CEL. Un may be secondary causes rule out karao. Blast dekho, maybe something else is developing. Keep it as a differential. But if the main markers like PDGF are not positive, TEF2 ASSL1 are. Go slow with the diagnosis. Rather than just labeling, ha ha, ye to CEL hai, and it is poor prognosis, and may or every any of these NPN and NPN MDS can transform. So, what is idiopathic hepatic eosinophilic syndrome? No cause is known. Primary is clonal or neoplastic. That is then goes for the WHO criteria. Second, is due to other causes, due to cytokines. Sometimes in lymphomas it can occur. Again, in lymphomas it can be. Um, uh, a reactive uh, bystander, or it can be clonal. All right, so it can be both primary or secondary. Secondary reactive eosinophilia when there's some underlying condition. Primary is the clonal one. Hereditary eosinophilia is a dustbin diagnosis when nothing is there. Then you put it there, and then H E of undetermined significance when there's no underlying cause, no family history, no reactive neoplastic condition, nothing at all. You to call something H E S. You uh, uh, need to have an end organ damage. In H E of undetermined, there is no end organ damage also. It just shows no fills are there. So uh, this table was very important. I just wanted to tell you: supposing it is clonal primary eosinophilia, and you go for mutation analysis, then what mutation analysis will you go for? in your smear of eosinophilia if you are getting a lot of mast cells and prominence of neutrophils 
think of PDGFRA mutation. Monocytic lineage prominent hai with few neutrophils. Go for B. Lymphoma associated hai, go for FGFR1. This is very well explained in my book in a table. I've just given you in short what PDGFR mutation you will think in a case jaha secondary causes rule out hai. Clonal lag raha hai aapko. Repeated. To call something HES, you have to have more than six months of persistent uh, eosinophilia with all other causes ruled out. So before sending something for clonal, you have marrow examine or PS examine and you have to say that reactive causes ruled out, you have to say that you have to say that you have to say Then look for these clues. You are getting mast cells. Think of achha, this could be PDGFR mutation. You are getting some ALL in one month. You know that there will be FGFR mutation. Bhi raha hoga. PDGFRB, you will get features of monocytosis with eosinophilia. Okay. Finally, I have told you this table I will keep repeating till the MPN doesn't go. See, the platelet in reactive thrombocytosis appears normal size. Theke? And multilobated wo in ka because of the type of mitotic activity that they go through that there is division but no separation of different cells. You will always get this kind. Now compare it with ET. Now look at this. Look at this Meg. Theke? Look at the nuclear lobe going like this. And then look at this. And look at the going goal goal. So when the lobes start forming antlers like this. Rather than being like this. Fine. Then this is a very good feature of ET. And you see there's so many. I mean if you look at low power look like it's a cluster. But all these clusters have other myeloid lineages in between. Now look at this tight cluster. Fine. And look at the uh, the nucleus over here or over here. Okay. And look at the, the color intensity over here. And look see there is no other myeloid lineage in between these two. Over here also. So this is cellular phase of PMF and this is ET. There are dwarf megs. Okay. In CML. Uh, if you can imagine this, मतलब single छोटू lobes, एक दो lobes रहेंगे size में छोटे दो तीन lobes भी हैं तो size में बहुत छोटे होते हैं. MDS will have micromeg, ठीक है? And uh, this is uh, ring sideroblast micromeg. Uh, although this is not a micromeg, this is due to cutting of the bone marrow biopsy, sectioning defects बहुत होते हैं. But this is how micromeg might look. So now you will say sectioning है, then how will we look for how many micromegs are you getting? Look for ki what is the other picture of baki cells kaise lag raha hai? Dysplasia hai? Ya baki mein kya lag raha hai? It, uh, normally MDS has thrombocytopenia. A lot of dysplasia. So getting one single micromeg with nothing totally normal marrow or excessive um, megakaryocytes, the chances are that this is a cutting artifact rather than an actual micromeg. Okay. So a cell is recognized by the company it keeps. So that is why this table is there. This is my book. You can get it on, uh, type the name, type my name on Google. You will get the link to buy this book. Please read it, share it with your friends. And I'll be back again after 10, 12 days and complete with uh, PMF and then move to histopath. So thank you and have a good day.